Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven women in business learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident, feel empowered, and challenged through inspiring stories, and tell it like it is advice for business, life, and leadership. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle, the Velvet Machete, and I am so excited that we get another week together to learn more about awesome women in business stuff. Um, Let's do a little housekeeping. We don't have a ton of time today because I went over in my interview, but I think it's well worth it. Um, Also, I should add that I was having some serious technical difficulties. So the audio is not terrible. Don't get me wrong. It's just not ideal. So I apologize for that in advance. Um, Poor Emily. Um, I've been friends with Emily since the fifth grade, and uh, she was my best friend. Um, or in my best friend group, you know, you always had groups when you were younger, um, fifth, sixth grade, um, eighth grade, we went back to the same school together. I mean, we've got like way deep history. So it's super fun having her in the bombshell business experts, um, because she's wicked smart as a woman. And I'm just so blessed to still have her in my life. Um, and never really lost much touch with her because, you know, I am a definite relationship person. Um, Okay, so one thing that I want to let you know is that the Bombshell Business app has been submitted to both Google Play and the App Store through Apple. So um, we are crossing our fingers that we will hit that September 1st deadline, but it is all about how quickly they approve it and um, put it in the stores. So um, cross your fingers and your toes with me. Um, and then of course, well, I don't know, of course, I've never done this before since I've had the podcast. I used to do webinars and I got away from them. And the feedback that you all gave me was that you wanted to learn more about your brand. So da, 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 da. I am hosting a series of webinars that they're going to be live. They're not going to be pre-recorded so that I can teach you the content, but then you can actually answer or ask questions and I can answer them at the end. So if you're like, shoot, yeah, I'm going to register right now, then you just need to go to bit.ly forward slash secret to biz brand. Um, because it is the secret to your business brand. So again, that's bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash secret to biz, B-I-Z brand, B-R-A-N-D. Of course, that'll be in the show notes. So the reason why I like to focus on the secret to your business brand (laughs) is because there's all kinds of fluff advice about building a brand and it's all over the internet. um, And and if I wasn't a brand person, I can see how that would be super overwhelming and how some of it could even mislead you to misstep in your marketing because it's hogwash. Um, I wish I had a better word for than hogwash. Like there's got to be some like really grandpa like word that you can use. But, um, you know, what you want to do is differentiate yourself from your competition. And then when you do that, you also need to build trust with your customers and your potential customers. And if you don't know how to do that, that that could just be super frustrating. And I remember because again, I'm a lifetime branding person, or at least a career branding person. And creating my brand Um, for this business venture was frustrating and overwhelming. So this will be interactive. I'm going to play with you. I'm going to pick on you. And that's just what I do. So you'll want to take part in this. Um, In it, you'll learn how branding fits into the bigger picture of your business. Because if you've been listening to this podcast, you know, your brand is not just, you know, your logo. There's so much more than that. Um, You'll learn uh, examples of large brands competing in the same industry and what makes them different and what you can learn from them and how they position themselves uniquely. Um, We, I will also immediately give you a complimentary worksheet. So when you register, you'll get the worksheet. If you come or you don't come, really doesn't matter. You can keep the worksheet and use it. Um, But you'll leave with more vision and confidence 
I'm going to teach you how to craft your brand promise so that you won't be confused. You won't have like that awkward elevator pitch thing that you do when you're at a networking event and it feels awkward to you and it feels awkward to the other person. Um, Your shoddy social media posts will be done. That ambiguous website copy that looks like it could belong on anybody's site. All of that is going to go um, because I'm going to teach you the number one secret to brand clarity. Um, So... I want to show you in this webinar, which will take less than an hour with questions and everything. If we go over, it will only be for people who want to continue to ask questions. I want you to be able to attract the right customers, the customers you enjoy serving, the customers who will gladly pay you for your product or your service. And everybody's not riding the struggle bus, trying to convince the other person that you're worth it. And they're not complaining because they don't feel like they're getting the value that they want. Cause I'm going to teach you how to match yourself with the right people. So, We are going to put this in the show notes, but if you are that person that needs to register now, go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash secret to biz brand, bit.ly forward slash secret to biz brand. It'll be in the show notes at amberhurdle.com podcasts with an S, amberhurdle.com podcasts with an S. The show notes will have the link bit.ly forward slash secret to biz brand. Um, the next webinars are going to be on September 4th and September 11th. So you want to be sure September 4th looks like it's going to be at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, which would be 2 o'clock Eastern Time. And then the one on the 11th will be at 4.30 p.m. Central Time, which will be 5.30 Eastern Time. So for those of you who might need to get off work first to listen, I got you. And I've got some other ones coming up too, but um, those will be the ones that are coming up next. So be sure you register for that. Um, Okay, so let's talk about today's guest. I gave you a little preview. Um, I lovingly refer to her as Emily Mary Bob, and I don't even remember why. (laughs) That's how long we've been friends. Um, But if you ever see me uh, maybe post like once we're in the app and we are um, on the chat wall and we're talking with y'all about whatever the topic of the week is. If I call her Emily Mary Bob, just know that goes way, way, way back. Um, she is not Bob. Um, I don't know where Lou even came from, but her name is Emily Mernon. She owns Wild M Events and her expert role with the Bombshell Business Experts is event production. And y'all know I love me some event production. Um, She's also the founder of Branch Out Experiences, which are curated events that bring together established women entrepreneurs for community growth and adventure. Um, As a founder of Wild Elm Events, that is an event planning company that helps entrepreneurs create high quality events. She has over 12 years experience in planning events from 10 to 1000 people. And her passion is to help foster deeper connections and community through live events. And I think you will see that as she oozes that passion for connection in our interview. I mean, she is incredible. You're going to learn how to identify um, what events to attend during this conference season. I know many of you are getting ready for all these fall conferences. Um, She's going to teach you how to prepare for the event, how to navigate the agenda, how to plan your own little mini event at whatever bigger event that you're going to. And I don't mean like, you know, hospitality suite or anything, but just something simple like a dinner. Um, She's going to teach you how to take notes. Super psycho. I thought I was psycho. This girl just next levels that. Um, And psycho in a good way, of course, we're all, you know, pretty driven type A. She's going to teach you how to follow up after a conference or an event in a meaningful way that will actually matter and foster relationship and how to go the extra mile so that um, people remember you because that's the game, right? If they remember you, then that that creates a deeper connection. You might get referral business. They might become a customer um, or maybe you just get a really super amazing friendship out of it. So anyways, I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it with Emily. So check it out. All right, Emily, thank you so much for being a guest on the Bombshell Business Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Fantastic. So um, as I mentioned earlier, Emily and I have been friends literally since the beginning of time. I'm pretty sure Um, we've done a lot of bike riding and um, cheerleading and cookie and maybe candy selling in front of grocery stores for fundraisers. 
stores? Uh, we've sold a few things, I think, in front of so. grocery stores. <laughs> we, pair, we paired well together on Oh, on yes, we did. <laughs> so we're still selling to this day, um, this time as entrepreneurs. And, um, and I, what I love about Emily, because, of course, I have a background in events, um, is, is that she also loves events. So I, I want to be mindful that we keep this in the allotted time and that we don't go on for days and days about how amazing events can be for your business. Um, so let's dive into how to maximize your conference or event attendance. Um, we will talk about all kinds of events with Emily over um, the course of the next several months, um, since that is her expert topic. But since we're in event season and conference season, we wanted to really help you figure out how to maximize your experience so that you actually get a return on the investment because conferences aren't cheap, right? They are not. No. Okay. And it's time, it's energy it, and the cost. So we want to make sure all of it is an investment that you are seeing the return on. Yeah, because a lot of people go to conferences kind of willy nilly because other people in their industry are like, oh, you got to go to this. And so they do because that's where all the cool kids are going. But is it really the best place for them to spend their time, their energy and their money when it comes to it, getting a return for their business? So how do we even start? Like, how do you identify what's right for you to attend? Yeah. And I think that this is something just even that thoughtful practice of like, should I be attending this conference is what people miss and they attend for FOMO or fear of missing out <laughs> um, versus like, this is actually going to help me in my business. And so the first thing we just need to do is identify your goals for attending a conference. Is it to learn the latest trends in your industry or is it to network with influence, influencers or peers in your industry? Um, and based on what that goal is, it's going to kind of lead you to the conference that you should be attending. So if content is your main goal, especially if it's industry specific or if it's more of a general like marketing, social media marketing or something like that, then you're going to find those conferences that fit with what you want. And you're going to look for ones that have thought leaders um, and accessibility to speakers, sometimes the really large ones, I've noticed sometimes you're not getting any new content. It's just kind of people are doing their highlight reel and then you don't really even have accessibility to, to speakers to ask questions or learn. Um, and if you're going to build relationships, which is why I attend a lot of events, for me, 80% of the reason I go to an, a conference is because of who's attending. Yeah. So... Um, I'm going to look for ones that have speakers that I can connect with and, and there's a little bit more accessibility to them as well as the attendees, influencers, peers, like whether I'm looking for a mentor or I'm looking maybe for a peer mastermind group, kind of whatever that goal is for me, I'm going to be looking at that attendee list and who's attracted to that conference awesome. and the size of it referral sources. I mean, right. like, yes. it, it's, it's building that team around you, not only that can help you shortcut your learnings. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. If you're going to a valuable conference where they have actionable takeaways and their content, then that's great because whatever you need to learn just in time for whatever's going on in your business, you can, you can get you know, fire hosed at a conference as opposed to taking right. a course over time or whatever. But the beauty of interacting with other people that are in your industry is that they might be a few steps ahead of you, or maybe they're lots of steps ahead of you, or maybe they just know more about a part of your business that you don't and vice versa. And so maybe you can talk to them about some of your systems and they could talk to you about some of their marketing strategies and you're helping each other learn, not to mention, um, I mean, I met people at a conference this past month where I know the next time that somebody asks me um, if I know a speaker for X, Y, Z, like I know exactly who I'm sending them to. So it's, it's my privilege to be able to refer business to peers that I know, like, and trust because I got to know, like, and trust them at a conference. Yes. And I mean, that in person getting to know someone that just kind of catapults that know, like, and trust with someone versus I mean, we connect with people online, which is amazing. But when you meet those people in person, you can just the energy and what you get to find out about them is just so much different than online. So it's really building those in person relationships. So you can refer them in the online space if that's where you're at. Yeah. Um, 
food yeah. and beverage are are two ways that um, builds yeah. intimacy. It sounds crazy, yes. but it is the truth. And so, if sharing a meal with somebody that's a whole different level than getting on a Zoom call. Yeah, it is. And I mean, for me too. I well, anyone relationships is what builds businesses. And it, and even if maybe you don't have a reason like a referral reason for someone right then. You never know if a year from now, two years from now, or in our case, many years from now, like you, who would have thought in fifth grade when we met that, you know, years <laughs> later we would be on a call. Obviously you don't want that kind of time between meeting um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and working together. But even, I mean, I've met people at conferences, you know, two years before that, you know, then I'm like, oh my gosh, this person would be great for this opportunity. I'm going to reach back out to them. And of course, I've nurtured that relationship in the meantime, which we'll get to, but um, you never know when the right fit's going to be. So you're just wanting to continue to build those relationships and nurture them. Yeah, totally. Okay. So okay. if you know what type of events that you need to go to, you've narrowed it down. Now you know exactly the, let's just say you pick one conference a year. How do you prepare for that event? And like, when do you begin to prepare? Yeah, this I think is where a lot of people drop the ball in preparing for the event. And um, one of my mentors told me that you should spend more or at least equal amount of time preparing for an event and and like after the event as you do during the event. Um, so I start basically as soon as I sign up for a conference. If there's a Facebook group, um, I'll join it, of course, and kind of start seeing who the other attendees are. And I'll start researching attendees. So whether it's through a Facebook group, if they don't have it, hashtags are great, which usually is a little bit closer to when the event starts, people start using that hashtag. And I'll narrow down a list. So let's of slow that oh, down a real, yeah. real quick, because I know some of my listeners are not hashtag savvy. So when you mm -hmm. say there's a hashtag, and they start using it closer to the event, can you elaborate on what that means and how to leverage that? Yeah. So say we're ha at Bombshell Conference and the hashtag is Bombshell 2018. When people are in Facebook or on Twitter or Instagram, a lot of times they'll post a photo, you know, whether it's like I'm getting on a plane going to the Bombshell Conference and then they'll use the hashtag Bombshell 2018. So search for or that. whatever that event group is. And a lot of times if a conference is, is good and usually the larger ones do, they have a specific conference hashtag that they'll be trying to promote as well. Saying anytime you post a picture, make sure you use our conference hashtag. So you just search for it in Facebook or on Instagram or Twitter, whatever is your preferred um, social media medium. Um, and just kind of look who's posting for those people. And those people are also typically what people who tend to be really engaged and are open to meeting people because they're, they're wanting to get the most out of that conference as well. Yes. If somebody so, is using a conference hashtag, they're raising their hand to say, I'm, I'm involved. I want to be involved. I want to meet other people because I'm allowing you to, to search and find me. <laughs> so yeah, those are, those are your people to start with from a networking perspective. Definitely. And I mean, now too, there's some conference that even have apps, which um, that's a whole nother thing. But if there's an app, get on it um, and try to engage. Because again, the people who are using the apps or the hashtags or even active in that Facebook group are the people who want to connect. And so once I've kind of done some of that research, I narrow it down to like six or eight people that I want to meet. And I dive a little bit deeper into some online research, you know, just with their public profiles on Facebook um, or Instagram or potentially friend them if you've, you've had enough of a connection or conversation with them and feel comfortable with that. And I find out what their interests are, what what they're doing um, in their business that's kind of unique or what you might, some questions you have. And I come up with a couple of questions to ask the person so that way we can have an interesting conversation versus, you know, you go up to someone you're excited to meet and then you're like, ah, how's this weather? Or... <laughs> Something super, because I do that. I'm awkward. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm the first to say, like, I can be completely awkward if I haven't thought of some questions beforehand, because I just get excited and then I start mumbling. <laughs> <or ranting. laughs> 
So one thing, I'm, I'm a part of the National Speakers Association and I mean, just went to the best conference I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, and, and it was just super valuable, but there is a, um, and, and let me back up and say it was valuable because it was all actionable. Like I knew exactly what I was going to do when I left and that isn't always as clear. There's a lot of high level ambiguous information sometimes at conferences, making it feel more like a pep rally than a learning experience. Yes. And this was definitely a learning experience that had ample networking opportunity all built in. It was just beautiful. But um, one funny thing about NSA is there's like a, um, or at least in, in the, in the women, they say, don't ask what somebody's topic is. Like, don't introduce yourself and be like, what's your topic? And I don't necessarily agree with that because if I understand what you speak about or like what your business is, then I feel like I automatically learn all kinds of things about you. So, um, any suggestions on getting, like when you make your introduction and you're starting to talk to a new person, how do you approach that without making it feel like you're only interested in their business? Yeah. So instead for me, instead of doing, what do you do? Just because it's only because it's a boring question that everyone asks, I'll say something like, are you working on any projects that you're super excited about right now? Or, um, what speaker has resonated with you the most? And usually from those, I mean, the what are you working on has that same what do you do, but it's more honing into what are they excited about? Because once you kind of ask that opening question or what has been your favorite speaker, and then you find out why, you end up learning about what they do and why they find it interesting. Um, so it's more even, like a backdoor question that will ultimately get to you, what you want to know anyways. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and I think too, is like sometimes when you say, what do you do? If it's someone who's maybe new in the industry or maybe, um, or they're just not super comfortable, they'll just be like, oh, I do marketing. And then maybe not kind of go on or expand like you're wanting them to, to really get to know them. So asking them something about what they're passionate about or like what they found really interesting, then you can kind of ask some additional questions like why, how does that pertain to your business and kind of work at it that way. It becomes a longer conversation potentially than just right out the gate. What do you do? Right. So, um, I, I love that thought process. And I love that anybody who is new doesn't have to come up with like their elevator speech, which is completely right. lame to begin with. <laughs> like, exactly. it's like, oh, in the next 30 seconds, let me tell you this very well rehearsed uh, spiel that I've created for you. Um, and it does make it more conversational. So you can explore each other as opposed to swapping like 50 word tidbits. Exactly. So yeah, instead of the I help, blank for blank, you know, whatever yeah. it is, which I mean, it can definitely be useful in some circumstances. If you're really trying to build relationships and nurture relationships, you want to expand on that and be have a human. And you really want to know what they're passionate about, what they're really interested, in. like, what are they working on that they end up staying up super late working on just because they can't stop. They're so excited about it. Ooh, Not just good. What they do, you know? Yeah. So maybe that's a good question is, what do you work on when you should be working on other things? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's a exactly, good question. Exactly, <laughs> because that's what we want to know, what they're passionate about. Well, fantastic. So, um, again, I'm going to just brag on influence and, um, and it's committee chairs this year. So they did have an app, which is super handy to not only connect with other people, but also to build out your agenda. Because I'm a nerd, and I do build out my agenda like in, in Google Sheets and map out like where I'm going when I don't, I'm, it's not willy nilly. Um, and so it was nice for it to just like beep and be like, this is where you need to go next. So I won't divulge how and why because I'm going to guess that you have some really great tips on how to figure out the agenda. Yeah. I, and I think this is also where sometimes people don't take enough time and they're just like, Oh, I'll wing it. Or they get so set on their agenda that they also don't leave any flexibility to, you know, change while they're there depending on what's going on. So fortunately we've already set out our goals for the event. So whether it's content or 
if it's to connect with a speaker, you're going to look at that. And, and for me, I pick the like must ha- like must attend. So what sessions have that speaker that I really want to connect with? Or what session has the content that's new and interesting? Um, and so I'll also research the speakers as well by watching some videos, um, reading their content, kind of seeing what they've already done. And I'll look to see if they're just kind of rehashing old stuff or if there's kind of bringing something new to the table. And also for me, that helps me create some questions that I can ask them during the Q and a session. If it, if they have one. Oh, lovely. So not only will you get your specific needs addressed, but you also begin a relationship with the speaker and create a more visible profile among other attendees. Yes. I mean, I think this is one of the key things. So when I'm looking at the agenda, I'm looking at the speakers, I'm researching these features, speakers, again, all this prep in advance to really set it up. Coming up with a good question is key. And if you can be the first person to ask that question, and it's interesting, and it's really thoughtful based on their stuff, they're going to remember you. And let me know, because I've heard this from a lot of speakers. I'm not a speaker, but apparently the seconds between does anyone have a question and the first person raising their hand, it could feel like hours because they're just like, please someone ask a question and please help it be interesting. And so they, you want to be that first person to raise your hand, ask the question and have it be thoughtful. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, you know, I'm so inquisitive anyways. I probably always raise my hand, but I've never really (laughs) thought to, put those questions down in advance. I take that back. I did, I did have a, a additional cost on this last um, conference that I went to. There was like pre-conference things that you can purchase that went to the foundation, the NSA foundation kind of fundraiser type things. And I did prepare questions for that because I mean, shoot, I was paying extra. I wanted to be sure <laughs> I got everything right. that I needed. Um, but I, I can say, you know, even just from this last, um, event that I went to, I, I decided I was going to stay on two different tracks because it is easy for me to get monkey mind. And I think all entrepreneurs have a, a pretty high probability of, um, like shiny object syndrome. And so you, I, I wanted to go to this technology, um, session, but, I wasn't practically going to apply that to my business in the next six months. Like it, it probably wasn't going to be something that I would integrate. I wanted to know about it, but I probably would have played with that toy as opposed to doing what I needed to do. And so my two biggest priorities were, um, sales processes and, um, on stage, uh, presentation skills. So if it didn't fall into those two buckets, I did not attend. And so I was a little more Nazi about it. And I did have a couple where I'm like, I might go this, this, or this. Um, But the one time that I broke that rule, I was really disappointed at the end. And it wasn't the fault of the speaker because the speaker delivered what they thought was valuable to the audience. But what I was uniquely looking for didn't really fit into what he was presenting. So it wasn't his fault. It was my fault. If you were disappointed in a breakout session, it's because you probably chose wrong. <laughs> yeah. It's because def- it doesn't apply to you. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you didn't do the homework and you didn't set those goals, which I love that you set the goal of these are the things that I want to get out of this conference because the com- conferences, I mean, there's so much information and you can't hear it all and learn it all. So to be really intentional about what you want to get out of it. And I didn't leave feeling overwhelmed. I mean, I left left like, here's my to do's. Here's what I need to pass on to my team. And here's the timeline. And I immediately started implementing my learning, which in turn gets me my money back for what I spent on the airfare and the conference uh, fees and, and the, you know, six days at a hotel. I mean, it's not cheap. It's not. And as you're saying, when you kind of do a little bit of random everything, it is just an overwhelm of what can I implement? Like I now have five different things that I'm wanting to do versus being really specific. And if you're very specific, like I go back to my glamour goals 
And what am I trying to accomplish by the end of this year? If this conference is in July. I have, I have half of, half of a year left to like bring it home strong. So in light of my goals that I set for myself at the beginning of the year, what do I need to get from this conference in order to reach or exceed those goals in the next six months? That's yeah. a real clear way. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm the planning Nazi and, you know, everybody makes fun of me for it, but when you're intentional as Emily is highly recommending that you be, everything goes back to what are your, what's your company culture? What are your values? What are your operational goals? What, what is it that you're trying to accomplish big, big picture? Like, why are you even in business when you are focused on those things and you have all of that established and to do all that, you'll have to go back through old episodes to make sure you have all that foundation Situations like this, where you feel like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of, a lot of decisions to make for a conference. When you have the baseline laid out of all of that culture, operational, your systems, your, your annual strategic goals, your long-term vision, when that foundation is laid, decisions like this are easy peasy. It's like, oh, well, in light of these things, I'm going to look at this and that's the obvious solution. So I'm going to come off my soapbox now. But I always like to tie it back to why we are intentional about everything that we do. And it, I mean, it is so true. When you have that foundation, it does make navigating the agenda and making these decisions so much easier. And even having your brand solid and your ideal customer mm-hmm. profiles built out. I mean, when I was sitting in there learning about, um, you know, different speaking sales techniques. I mean, that I'm not going to apply those strategies here on the podcast because that's a completely different customer profile. That's a meeting planner profile. That's not a bombshell profile. So, um, you know, just keeping all of that in mind keeps everything straight in your head and you don't feel like a crazy person. (laughs) Okay. So, um, so we have identified which event is right to attend. And we've been kind of heavy on conference, but this can apply to workshops or retreats or networking events too. Um, you prepare for the event, spending as much time preparing as you actually spent at the event. And then you navigate the agenda if it's a conference, or maybe you even just look over the agenda if it's a, a workshop. Um, and then, and then what's next? What's the next step? So what I like to do is again, because for me, relationships is a huge part of why I attend a conference is I'll plan my own mini event during that conference. So whether it's like the first evening, like a dinner, or if lunches are open, I'll plan a lunch and I'll just invite maybe it's some of those six to eight people that I don't actually know yet. Or maybe it's people that I've connected with in the past and just haven't seen in a long time. I'll plan a dinner and just say, hey, we're all meeting at this place. Let me know if you'd like to join us. It's a good way to, A, find people to hang out with at dinner versus just kind of looking around, feeling awkward, like I don't know what to do or eating by yourself. And it's great to connect with people you don't know, nurture relationships with people you already know, or even um, I've also done in the past, I've invited speakers because a lot of times if they're just attending the event, there's not stuff for them all the time. So if I really want to connect with the speaker, I'll plan a speaker dinner and host one, you know, before the conference starts. A lot of times after speakers have gone on stage, you know, they're celebrities, whereas beforehand people might not know who they are and they're just eating by themselves. So I find planning a mini event to be a great way of just kind of building those relationships. And it's also so wonderful if you do it before the event, because then the next day you have six people that you are now good friends with. So you can always connect again during the breaks or sit next to them during a session if, if you're at the same one. And that's such a blessing to other people too. Um, the very first NSA conference that I ever went to um, was the winter conference and Joel Block, who is the uh, outcoming or immediate past um, NSA greater Los Angeles area chapter president. Um, and I didn't really know him, but again, connecting online before a conference and engaging and talking to everybody gets you to know people. And I was invited to his pre-conference dinner, which was mainly the LA contingency and then a lot of the speakers and then me. And 
what a blessing that was for me because I immediately knew a whole handful of people. And that was my first real group and relationship that I had within this organization. So not only is it good for you because you're playing host. And by the way, you can put like Dutch tree, like you're hosting, yeah. you're pulling it together, but you're not having to pay for everything. Um, you're getting the blessing by being able to connect with everybody and to look like the benefactor. But imagine the the goodwill that you're building with the people who are in attendance too, because you're serving them and, and giving them an opportunity, which is awesome. Yeah, it's so great. I mean, it does make you almost an influencer as well and boost your profile. But and it does, it feels so good to be invited to something. Yeah. So as another attendee to be like, wow, she thought of me for this. It just feels so good. And it has lets them do something during the conference and meet people and connect with people. And it just kind of builds those relationships even more than they already were. Absolutely. Love, love, love it. Okay. What else? What else should we do now that we have done all of these other steps? Yeah. I mean, the obvious one is taking notes, but I take notes slightly different than a lot of people. I'll typically find out if a session is going to be recorded and um, distributed to the attendees later on, because that'll shift how I'm taking notes. So a lot of times what I'm doing when I'm taking notes is finding questions for the speakers. Um, if I haven't already done it or if I um, come up with new notes, but I also make notes. Um, so besides just notes within the conference itself and I, you know, star things that I want to work. Um, like I have a system. I do squares for things that I want to implement, kind of stars for quotes. So depending on how crazy you want to be, I'm kind of, I love spreadsheets. I like weird organizational things. So for me, that works really well. I realize that's not going to work for everyone, but come up with a system that works for you. I also have a new notebook for each conference, just a slim moleskin. So that way, when I'm looking back, like, oh, I remember I had a conversation with someone at this conference, or I remember the speaker said something at this conference, I can go back to that specific conference notebook. Um, I but as the same I, thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm jealous of your squares and your stars because I, I haven't It makes that. <laughs> it really easy because then I look for squares of like, oh, I want, that's something I actually wanted to implement. Whereas like a star is more of like a quote or something kind of inspirational, but I'm not necessarily going to do anything with that. Yeah. But, but my little library of journals that I have is, um, is pretty intense because yeah. it, you don't want to have to look through your day to day you know, note taking journal to find the stuff you want to just be able to put your hands on it when when you're thinking about it. So yeah, love, love that. Yeah. And for me too, I take notes on people on conversations. So if someone mentioned that their book's going to be published in a couple months, I'm just going to make a note of it. Or if someone mentions that they love to knit, I'm just going to make a note of that too. So I just have these notes on people because I can't remember everything, but I also want to build these relationships and nurture these relationships. So that way I'm able to follow up in a more meaningful way. Awesome. So speaking of follow up, yeah. <laughs> that's like the hardest part, right? Cause you're tired and you're traveling mm -hmm. and you're trying to get back into your normal life and, um, get caught up on business and laundry and everything else. Like how, how should somebody really be intentional about the follow up process? Yeah. So for me, I try at the end of each day, um, to connect with people that I met that day on, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram, whichever, I, whichever they seem to use the most. Um, and I just send them a private message to say hello. It was great to connect with you. I'm excited to see you more at the conference. I just wanted to say, you know, hello. And so that way I've done it at the end of the day. I don't need to, I don't come home with like the stack of people I want to connect with. Although, you know, I don't always do that. If I ended up staying out too late, I like my sleep. Sleep usually <laughs> trumps connecting with people online if I was out late. Yeah. I, you know, I, I use a tool too called, um, cam card. It's an app and you could take a picture of the card and it'll upload it and then you can tag it. So like I have, um, different conferences that I've attended or different events or whatever. Um, or it might've been that I was speaking and they were in the audience and they handed me their card. And so it's easier to search that way. And I can, um, like, integrated into my contacts or I could just know to go back to it and then come up with, you know, a re whether I'm sending a LinkedIn 
connection to them or following up on a conversation, like I have their business card and notes in this actual app called cam card. So, so I love that. I, um, I don't like to keep business cards. I like to be able to do something. So I love that. I don't have to look into that. I input all mine into a CRM. That's just a Gmail extension. So I have all my notes, all my like Facebook links and all of that sort of stuff in there. Ooh, what is that? We always like to share good it's tools. Mix Max. Mix Max. Okay. Yeah. And it the show notes. just links to, and it finds people's, um, LinkedIn or Facebook, like any social media profile that they have. Oh, fantastic. So it's really great. So I have a hard time keeping my CRM of, um, like, potential customers separate from my people that I'm never going to email to. Um, mm-hmm. Again, and let me back up when I say that, um, when somebody hands you their card at a professional event, that does not imply permission to put them on your email list and send them email solicitations or even friendly newsletters, no matter how valuable you think your information is. If they have not opted in to your email list, you are conducting business illegally. So just flat yes. out. So I have to put that disclaimer on there. So that's why I'm very careful about which CRM I use for networking and which CRM I use for sales and and prospecting and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's really important to, <laughs> to say. I'm glad you did. And I just realized MixMax does not is not the one. It's full contact. So full I'm sorry contact. about that. Okay. MixMax I, is also a Chrome extension I use, but that's for scheduling um, events and or scheduling emails and seeing if someone's read your email. So that's the difference. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, but also with the follow-up too, I mean, you've made these notes – like through, you know, through the content, as well as hopefully notes on people, like you need to do something with them. So I always love to try to take a day right after a conference, either stay an extra day there, or just completely block out my calendar, that first day of work on my return, just to create a plan. And a lot of times I'll do this on the plane home as well. But to come up with a plan of what am I going to do with all this content at the conference, what's going to be useful to my business, what can I just kind of shelve for a little while, and I'm going to create like, what do I want to implement right away? What do I want to implement in the next three months? What do I want to implement in the next six months? So just taking that and coming up with a plan of action is super important. Yeah, because you know, the minute you get back into those weeds, that this is going right. to be forgotten. Yep, exactly. And I mean, conferences, there's so much information and you can't implement every single thing that you've learned. So really highlighting, what am I going to do right away? What do I want to do next after I've started implementing that first thing? Instead of feeling like you look at this full notebook of, I need to do this all right now. And then nothing ever happens. Yeah, absolutely. And um, again, resources that have already been established for you, Bombshells, if you go, um, if you get the Bombshell Businesswoman, How to Become a Bold, Brave Female Entrepreneur, coming up with a strategic plan is in there. (laughs) There are bonuses that go with that book, like free bonuses that will help you figure out. I know a lot of you get super overwhelmed when there is a lot of stuff to do. And the way that your brains work might not be the way that like Emily's brain or my brain works where we back into our plans. So if you struggle with how to create and implement a plan, it's in the book. I'm sure there's something on a former podcast. Um, if you if you're a new listener, go back to the beginning because you will get like a little mini bombshell MBA um, from starting from episode one. Okay, so so much good information here, Emily. Um, one thing, sorry, I just thought of something else. Yeah, that feels really important. And you need to kind of go that extra mile. Um, instead of just connecting with people on social media. So if you took a note that someone has a book being published in a couple months, make sure, see if you can pre-order it or put a reminder on your calendar so that way when it goes on sale, you can be one of the first to get it and review it. Or if they have a podcast, listen to their podcast, re, or um, do an iTunes review or even just share it on your on social media somehow. Just ref- remember to refer them. Make sure you're kind of going that extra step not with every single person that you met, but at least with a, a handful or two, just 
to really make sure that you're building that relationship because you don't need connections. You need relationships. Yes. So it's not about how many people you meet. It's about how many of those relationships you're going to nurture. Um, that's going to really make the difference. Absolutely. And don't be, um, you know, like pretty much everybody who leaves a conference with a stack of cards, like they're going to LinkedIn request you. So that's not right. enough because you're not going to stand out that way. If there's somebody that you really want to get to know, then tell them as you are talking to them, like, oh, cool. And we all get back and settled in and, you know, we, we get our bearings again. I'll, I'll reach out and maybe we can hop on a call or a Zoom call. And then now you're having a follow-up conversation because think yes. about like if you were, if you met somebody new that you wanted to be friends with in person, like in your own community, you would then probably like, Hey, let's go out to dinner or let's grab a cup of coffee or let's take a yoga class together or whatever. Like you will continue nurturing that relationship and that friendship. And it's the same thing with business. Like you can't just be like, Oh, I'm going to send them a LinkedIn request and we're going to become besties. That's right. not how it works. So I love that you threw that in, um, vital, vital piece. And maybe the most important part, because I mean, we started this conversation, Emily said the most important part about going to a professional event, be it a conference or a networking event or a workshop or retreat or whatever is, is not necessarily the content, although that's valuable, but it's the relationships that you're building that can help shorten your learning curve, that can help provide support. I mean, it's, it's weird being a speaker. It is. <laughs> it's, it's weird being a podcaster. Like that's not a normal thing. When you go, you know, to your friend's house for a dinner party, like you're, it's not like, oh, you sell insurance. Oh, you're a real estate agent too. Oh, you're a teacher. It's like, oh, I'm a podcaster and a speaker. Like you need people yeah. in your life that you can commits with, that you can swap strategies and things. So if we agree on the front end that that is one of the key parts, that belly to belly networking of going to a live event, then her last comment of go the extra mile is probably the most vital, even above and beyond planning out your agenda, taking notes or, or whatever. Yeah. Is that a fair statement? Definitely. I, I think it is the most important piece. And it's not too late. So if a month has passed or two months, obviously, the sooner the better. But don't be afraid to reach out. Say, I've met you at this conference. I've been meaning to get, you know, to reach out and just haven't had a chance. I'd love to hop on a Zoom call. Yeah. Or how can I be of service? Like, I would love to connect more. So obviously, the sooner the better. So it's top of mind for them. But it's never too late to connect with people and build relationships. For Sure. Love it. Okay. So you have given us amazing tips here, um, identifying how, you know, how to identify which event is right for you, preparing in advance for the event, navigating the agenda, planning your own mini event at the bigger event, um, how to take notes, how to follow up um, once it's all said and done and, and you get home um, and going the extra mile, all amazing things. Emily, um, where can Bombshell listeners find out more about you? Yes, um, my website's wildelmevents.com. And I'm also on Instagram and Facebook under Wild Elm Events. And that will well. all be in the show notes, of course. And um, I, I always want to make sure that you have the opportunity to work directly with the Bombshell Business Experts. So Emily, you got anything juicy that you can share with um, our, our fellow Bombshells today? I do. So if you're wanting to plan your own event, um, whether it's a small conference, a retreat, just a workshop, and you're really needing some help and don't know where to start, or if you've started planning and feel very stuck, I offer two-hour event planning intensives to get all your questions answered. There's a pretty intense pre, um, pre-call pre questionnaire just to make sure that we're really um, getting the most out of our two hours. And then you get all of my planning templates and checklists, waivers, um, as well as a week of email support afterwards in case there's some last minute questions or you need a little bit more help um, doing some of those templates, like a pricing template, um, as well as just a general event planning template. And typically it's $9.97 for bombshells. I'm doing a little more than half off at $4.50, which is the lowest price I offer it. So, or I've ever offered it. So I would love to help you if you're wanting to plan an event. Um, and we can even jump on a quick 20 minute call just to see if it's the right fit for you as well. And I have that under wildelmevents.com slash bombshell. That is 
redonkulous y'all that is a redonkulous offer that is so super generous um like i would not bat an eyelash at paying 450 dollars for somebody to help me get my poop in a group for an event and i'm an event planner like that's my background (laughs) like this is it's it's hard when it's your own business it's hard to see uh the forest for the trees so um if you're even thinking about doing an event i i highly encourage you to contact emily and start with that 20 minute conversation you could go on a date before you get married um (laughs) but make sure that you take action on this if events are in your future um, do it the right way because as we mentioned the the key component of events is relationship and if it's not planned the correct way then you break relationship instead of build relationship so of course we're always looking for progress not perfection um, but a, a way that you can make sure that it's done the right way is is to connect with um, Emily for this offer well, Emily, um, we I'm uh, finding that I'm going over with everybody because there's so much good information to share. But I appreciate you so much for um, these amazing tips. And um, I think as we move forward and learn more from you and your blog posts and on our future podcast episodes, um, the Bombshell community will be much, much enlightened for it. Well, thank you so much for having me and being a part of this. I'm super excited just to even get to know the bombshells a little bit better through what you're doing. So thank you for having me on. Awesome. All right, bombshells. Well, you know where to find the dates. You go to amberhurdle.com forward slash podcasts and look for Emily's episode for all the show notes. And um, don't forget, we have the bombshell business app coming out September 1st. And um, we are super excited about that. So everything will be very, very handy in the palm of your hand where you can finish listening to the podcast inside the app and then immediately go to the resources that we offer you just with the click of uh, your little fingertips. So we will catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit amberhurdle.com for more resources like show notes and check out the bombshellbusinesswoman.com to grab my book and download the free bonuses.